I'm Jane and I'm a tutor at Neg Learning Centre. We have a grant through the Scottish Government's Climate Challenge Fund called Seasons of Changes, which helps people in the community reduce waste, repair, recycle and also decorate cakes. At the moment, we're not able to deliver face-to-face -face classes, so we're bringing to your home this short video from the Learning Centre. So this is what we're going to aim to do with this tutorial. It is making an igloo cake with a range of penguins and little presents and snowballs and you can get as carried away as you actually want to. But our starting point is going to be with the basic cake itself. So you're going to need to bake something which has been either baked in a Pyrex bowl or this was actually baked in an old Christmas cake plastic container like you would get from the supermarket. I tend to not throw those away, they're really useful. They only really work effectively up to about 160, 170 in an oven before they start to disintegrate a little bit. But it's cooked me three of these little cake sponges so far, so they'll do the same for you without any bother. Um, so I've got that on a board, I've got it on a turntable as well, that's optional. If you've got one it just makes life easier, um, but it's not necessary to have one. You're also going to need some sort of a long rolling pin to be able to roll out your icing. The sugar paste, this is the roll out white icing. And then I've got a knife here which has got a crank in it. It is supposed to look like that, but an ordinary, just like a butter knife, like this sort of a knife will be fine. Um, a very good tool if you have one is a smoother. Mine is acrylic. You can also get them in plastic. And an icing sugar in a shaker is great, or if you haven't got a shaker, then maybe a sieve, and then you can just shake it out onto the surface. And then I've got some buttercream in a bowl with a knife. Okay, so this will take us to stage one, just icing the cake itself. Right, so let me talk a little bit first of all about the cake itself. You can do this in a fruit cake if you want to, that would work just as well. To do that, you would first of all put your marzipan layer over it, and you do it exactly the same way as we're just about to do the sugar paste. Um, what you will do though is you'll need to stick it with jam, so apricot jam is the preferred complementary tone that people tend to use. Um, so just as I'm about to do here with buttercream, first of all position the cake on the board where you want it to be. And a good little tip here, whether it's a fruit cake, whether it's a sponge cake, when you come to bake it, when it's come out of the oven, turn it upside down. So turn it this way round, and I do that for all my cakes because the weight of the cake actually gets rid of the dome that you might have got on the cake when it's been cooked. So it's just less work for you to have to do because when I cover this over in icing, any little bits and pieces will, so if a bit's been knocked out or whatever, you'll need to cope with that before you do anything else. So I've got a bit of a ridge around here from where it's domed, so I'm going to need to sort that out. Okay, so what I am going to do here is put some butter icing onto the cake and what you can notice as you start to do this is it's going to want to naturally want to move around. So I would just put a little bit of butter icing underneath there just to secure it first. It's not like using super glue, but it does help a little bit. Okay, so like you would put butter onto bread, if you're on a diet like I always am, then you're just going to put this uh, buttercream onto here. If you are doing it with a fruit cake and you're doing it with jam, then you would just get uh, warm the jam up first. I tend to use the microwave, it's very energy efficient and it's very fast to do. You just pop it in the microwave in a bowl, the amount that you're going to need. So for this size, it'd probably be something like about a tablespoon of jam. Warm it up so it's just a good consistency that it will move. And then you would take your pastry brush and brush it onto the cake. Okay. So that's got my basics on. So it's just a very light layer, just enough to make it stick. We don't want too much of it on there, otherwise you're gonna find that it'll just be sliding off, so you don't want that either. Okay, now you're going to need to move moderately quickly from here on in because that is being attacked by the air and will be drying out. So we really need to get cracking on this. So I'm gonna move that to one side and the thing that you're now interested in is going to be the sugar paste. If you have any bits on your cake, like I showed you that rim, um, where you've got a hole, or if you've got, say, where a sultana hasn't fully gone into a fruit cake, you're going to take little sausages like this and fill those holes up. So I'll do it, say, just on this part down the bottom here. See where I've got a gap there? If I just ice that, the icing will go into that little cup. So all I'm going to do is just take that little sausage and place it into there and then I use my knife and as I say a butter knife will be fine for this 
so that it just keeps it in line. So if you can imagine, if you've got a big bit, say, missing here, where, where you've got a sultana out of it, then you would fill that up before you put the jam onto it, and you'll need just a little bit of jam to stick it. So again, same thing around here. I have got a little bit of a hole there. So I'm just going to use that, stick it in there, and just make sure it's within the line of the cake, and then just take a little bit of buttercream down over it so that it will stick to it when we put the next icing layer on. Now, if I was doing something like a wedding cake, I would be really, really careful with everything that I was doing on this. I would make sure it was absolutely perfect. If we're doing a little Christmas cake, it's just for the family. Ah, that will do. That's absolutely fine. Right, okay. So now our next job is going to be to roll out the icing. So this is the ordinary sugar paste like you can buy in the supermarket. Um, I've given you the amount of quantities that you're going to need. For this one, because it's quite small, I would probably only need something like about three quarters of a pound or a pound. So that's about 300 to 400 grams of uh, icing to actually cover the cake itself. But because I want it to look like a snowy scene, I'm quite happy to use quite a bit more and take it out onto the board. And I've actually got a funky board here. It's got a lovely Christmassy design on it. You may have noticed it, those you can buy in the supermarkets. I have a pet hate that I never like throwing away boards. So did you know that you can actually buy the paper to recover it yourself? So it comes just like that. And all you do is just a bit of print stick or glue onto the top, and then you can stick it onto it. So you don't have to keep throwing it away. And I have to be honest, doing baking at this time of the year, when it's a little bit cold, it's kind of nice to have the oven on, isn't it? So you can save a bit of energy by doing your baking in the winter months and heat your house up at the same time for free. Result. Okay, right, so that has got that nice and malleable now. So that's really the important thing. So I don't know if you noticed there, it's kind of like a kneading action like you would do for kneading dough. So once that feels as though it's moving nicely, that's the point at which we're ready to roll it. I want a little bit of icing sugar just down on the work surface. Not too much, do not go mad, otherwise you will be just having piles of it everywhere. So you don't need that. It's just a small amount to stop it sticking into the table. And then I want it to be roughly the size that this is going to be. So if I was rolling just for that, it would be about half that amount of icing and just try and keep it to the size that you want. But because of this cake, what I want is a bit of the icing to go onto the board so I can go a bit of a random shape. If you're very hot-handed, like I am, then a good little tip is to have a bit of icing sugar on the side, put it onto your hands, and just put it onto your um, rolling pin. This is a wooden one, but you can buy like polypropylene, um, and they're also really good. Right, so tips for rolling out your icing. Really important that you only roll on one side. So I have rolled that. I'm now going to turn it through 90 degrees, and I'm going to roll it again. Never, never, never pick it up and flip it over. So it's not pastry. You're going to keep just this one side being rolled. We all have a natural bias. If you're right-handed, you tend to be a little bit heavier handed on the right-hand side, which is why we keep turning it all the time. Your shape will start to go a bit wayward. So let's assume we're doing it on a round cake. Just use your hands to bring it back to roughly a round shape and roll. Now I never roll straight to the end, I'm going to show you why, because as you move away from you, so the pressure that you're pushing on it gets more and it's really easy to just fall off. So then you can see I've got very thin icing here and it's not the same as the rest of it. So never ever roll to the real edge of the icing. So I stop just a little bit shy. Can you see that bit of icing there? And that's what I would always do. On the next roll, it's then brought it in line with the rest of it. Okay, so I am always a uh, roll it. If it was a really big bit of icing, if it was a really big cake that I was doing, I would actually go all the way up my arms and do it that way. And probably the thing that most people do wrong is that they have a tendency to go far too thin. If you want a professional looking finish on your icing, then it needs to be a decent thickness. Otherwise, it'll just be too thin and it'll show every little bump and, uh, that you've got and it just won't look quite the same. Okay, right, so we are probably somewhere near it. A good thing to do, a good guide to do, is if you take your cake and you go, right, use your drawing, uh, yeah, rolling pin, so it's roughly that size, roughly that size, roughly that size. So I know I'm looking for something that long as a minimum. I do not want a bit of icing that is this long because that's just too much to deal with. It's gonna make it harder for you to ice it. So as long as I am that at least all the way around, which I seem to be, we're good to go. 
Right, next stage then is the bit that everybody worries about. Because this is a thick bit of icing now, I can lift it up. So I'm going to use my hands underneath. I'm just going to splay them like that so that I'm fully supporting this icing. And there's lots that you can do with it while you've got it up in the air like this. Okay, so I'm going to place it. This is going to be the back of the cake. I'm going to place it so that it's close to the back. I'm going to lay it on it like you would do a blanket onto a bed. I'm going to let it fall over. And the first thing I want to do is just make sure that that is actually adhered to the top of the cake, okay? Then our next bit is to come down the cake bit by bit. This is where having the turntable is really handy because I can just use this part of my fingers here. This is gently pressing it against the cake itself, okay? So nothing firm. We're talking nice, sort of soft, gentle caressing. Think nice thoughts as you're doing this. Don't do this after you've had a horrible day. Right, okay, so there we go. We've got the icing onto there. Now, a really good tip is to use a smoother. This is like an iron for your icing. And if you go over the top of it, you can see how it's then, it's ironed it, so it's nice and smooth. Best will in the world, your hand is lumpy and bumpy. A smoother is absolutely straight. So if you're after those professional finishes to come over, go over the sides like this. And that will get like the top little chamfer on the top of the igloo. Okay, and once we've got that bit onto it, we can then go around the cake. Now this one actually has two different sides. Most of them are just square sided, um, but I've got a square tight side there. So if I'm going down right onto a board, that's a really handy size to have. Whereas this one is quite good if you just want something where you're not taking it right the way down to the base. So I'm going down. If I've made any goofs, if there's anything like that, oh, look at that, I've, I've, I've dug my smoother into there, just the warmth of your hand against the icing will actually start to take care of it. So there's no reason why, if you haven't worked at speed, that you can't get rid of any little dinks or any little mistakes that you've actually made. Okay, if you've worked your paste for too long, if you've taken too long between rolling it out and getting it onto here, you can get something called orange peel effect, which is just over the corners usually, and it looks like orange peel, so it looks sort of like jagged and cracked. And that's because the outer level of the icing is drying and the underneath is still moving, so it's cracking like a desert. So the art to this is just get that icing on there as fast as you can do, and there we are, we're sorted. Now, if this was a normal cake, I would then just get my knife in and I would just cut right the way down. But because this is going to be a snowy scene, I'm going to use this, this paste, this is going to be handy for me. I want to show you a little bit of the board because it's a pretty board. Why did I pay for a pretty board if I'm not actually going to use it or see it? So I'm going to just rip off some of the icing, very freehand, and then you can use your smoother to thin it out a little bit. So I'm almost using it like a rolling pin and you might find that it doesn't stick to your board. And if that's the case, then you would just use a pastry brush and you would then put a little bit of water underneath the icing. So at the minute, this seems to be sticking quite well. It's doing fine. Okay, now what we're going to be doing with this cake is actually making a little ice um, hole where they're going to be fishing. So therefore, I don't really want to cover all the way out to here. Um, I want some snow drifts and things like that to make it look natural. So therefore, I'm just going to take this as far as this bit of icing has gone. So yours might cover the whole board. If that happens, make sure you leave yourself a bit of a space around the outside edge. But I'm just going to leave it there for the time being. And the next thing I'm going to do is finish off the rest of the board so that you can see that done. But I need to now get my embossed um, blocks of ice around the actual igloo. Right, okay, so next stage then, we're going to need a few more tools. So if you have any circle cutters at home, cookie cutters would be great, but if not, go around the house and just look for something that is circular that you can use as a guide. So piping nozzles are good, anything really, which is just a circle shape, because we're just going to use it to either pop onto the top of the cake as a guidance so that we can mark on it, or we're going to emboss if it's something like this, which has got a clean edge that you can put into it and take it away. Just make sure you've cleaned it before you do it, just in case you've picked up something from the kids' toy box or whatever. Right, we have also got some other tools here which you can use. So if you have this one, which is a veiner, that would be quite a nice tool, but you just need to be a bit gentle with it because it does have a sharp point on it. Or the one that I probably prefer doing is this one, which is known as the blade. 
and that is like a knife but it's made out of nylon and it's quite sort of gentle so you're not actually going to cut yourself on it okay if you don't have either of those things then you can use any form of a knife that you might have around the house but just be careful because that's a little bit more aggressive than using one of the tools okay so how are we going to do this next bit so we're looking to put the blocks of ice on so if you can imagine at the top of the igloo, I'm sure you're all very familiar with igloos, they actually have a circular bit at the top. So what I'm gonna do is just place that up against it and try and get this as circular as I can. It's not gonna go that circular, but give it your best on a central, but just try your best. And all I'm gonna do is just very gently emboss it into the icing, make sure it's an equal pressure all the way around it, and then take it away. And now, as you can see, I've got my little circle just sitting in the middle of my icing. Now, if you don't have any other circle cutters or something else that you can use as a guide, then you're just gonna have to go freehand. But I found one which is just a bit bigger, which will do the job for me. So this is a bigger cutter. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to place it up to it first of all, and I'm going to try and get it as even as I can all the way around it. So I'm just gonna press down from the top, and then make sure again you're pressing evenly all the way down and then take it away and as you can see it looks a bit like a bullseye now on the top of the cake right so where this now gets really nice if you've got a turntable is the fact that we are now going to mark the rest of these on by hand so i'm going to use this blade tool and what you can do as long as you keep your hand fairly level then you should be able to move around the cake without too much problem if you've done like me and you've used a square cake, so it gives you plenty of space, one thing you're going to have to bear in mind is the angle that your hand is at. Because if you're in nice and close here and you're like this, that should be fine. But if you've actually gone on the outside of the board to do it and you're using that to help support you, all of a sudden your board is coming out to this point here, so you're going to have to be extending your tool. So just be mindful of that when you do it. Now the great part of any cake, there is always a back to your cake. So the idea behind this is the front of the cake is actually going to be along here. So the back of my cake is where the igloo is closest to the board. I haven't got a lot of space between here. So I'm going to start at the back in case I muck it up because we all do. OK, so I'm just going to start first of all. I'm going to do an embossed line so you can see how that's starting to emboss onto the icing. And I'm just going to gently turn the turntable and because this is penguins that have made this i am going to say that even if this is not perfect i don't think that matters too much because i don't think penguins are like eskimos are they so we're going to continue taking it all the way around if you're feeling brave just kind of go for it when you start getting round towards the back all you then need to do is look at where your other line is and just try and get the two of them to meet up okay so then you just need to do the same thing again so i'm going to come down a little bit again start embossing move it around just be as careful as i can because this is going to be a snowy scene as well even if you do make a bit of a muck up that'll be the perfect place for you to put a great big snow drift there's always ways you can get around it right okay so there you go so that's it marked up and usually if i was doing this not on film i would actually get down to the height of what I'm doing so I can actually control it a little bit better rather than standing on top of it. Okay, so our next point is to now make it look a little bit like bricks. So I'm going to come out from the center, from there to there, and then I'm just going to mark onto it. So emboss the lines fanning out from it. Just keep an eye on what you're doing because now you're getting to the point of thinking, am I gonna put one in there? Am I gonna put two in there? So I'll go roughly central and put one just about there. Then you want to work down and this time I want the centre line to be in between the middle of these two here. So if I just start it so that you can see it. And I'm going to move around, do the same thing here. And you can really get as carried away as you like in how many of these bricks that you have. So this gives you the effect of snow bricks. If I had to put these a lot closer together, you'd have a lot of other ones in between. Okay, and I'll do the same thing again, going further down. And if you want to, because you cheat, because now you know what you're doing, you could actually just then follow the one up above it and just work your way around, finishing all of your blocks.
Okay. Oops, now I've just gone in the wrong place there. Now because this icing is quite fresh, I can actually just roll over it with my finger and get rid of it. So it's a good idea to do this embossing straight away. However, I do know that the glue front is going there, so it's fine. Right, okay. Right, so we are finished. So that is now the main part of the igloo embossed. What I now need to do is move on to making the igloo front and also the snowdrifts around the edge of it. Right, okay, so next part then is going to be continuing to take this ice into the edge of the board. Um, I want it to look like a bit of a random shape as though it's just snow that has landed on there. I want there to be snowdrifts to make it a little bit exciting. So I'm gonna put a bit of icing on there and then I'm just gonna use my fingers to mold it together. Imagine all the little penguins are walking over this regularly. The great part to this is going to be you want it to be uneven. So you want it to look well trampled rather than perfectly flat. So quite different from what we were trying to achieve with our igloo. Now I'm going to have here the place where we have the hole, the ice hole. So I'm going to cut some of the icing away from there so that I have a hole for that. But I'll add that bit to there. I'm trying to make the front of the cake sort of sorted out because I need to add on my uh, entrance, my little porch, I don't know what they call it. Okay, and then this bit, I don't like this being so completely even, I want it to look random, so again, I'm just using my finger to make it look a little bit mottly. You could do this with royal icing, but as you've got sugar paste on the go already, why not just use that? Okay. And just ripping it off so we do this as soon as we can so when you've finished embossing the igloo you go straight on to doing this so that you've got molding time to be able to do this this paste is still nice and soft from when I molded it before I um, covered the cake with it so if you left it and if you didn't come back to this for an hour you wouldn't be able to extend it and stretch it and make all sorts of funky shapes with it just simply because it would be dried so do this straight away okay so that'll do that's got my basics sorted on there I now want to make the little porch for the front now raw, uh, sugar paste has a certain amount of strength in it um, you can buy strengtheners to put into it so carboxymethyl cellulose, CMC is one of those things, or gum tracker can. So if I was making sugar flowers or things like that that I needed to be really fine, then I would add it to it. But for this, you don't really need that. As long as we can keep this sturdy enough, we'll be fine. So all I'm doing at the minute is just modeling this to, to get the paste actually working. And I want to make a ball. So I am pressing down with both of my palms as I'm going around in a circle to make sure that I don't have any creases going through the icing. So that's your first tip. So then we just roll it into a ball. And if you are hot handed, like I am, just a little bit of icing sugar onto your fingers and that will stop it sticking to you. Right, so this is going to be sort of like a semi-circle or an archway really shape. So I'm just going to start modeling that sort of freehand of what I think the shape is going to, to look like. And then I'm gonna offer it up to see, is it about the right height? So that looks pretty good. It looks like about the right sort of entrance height. So I'm happy with that. So it's going to need to have a flat bottom and it's going to need to have a rounded top. Now it may or it may not stick to this icing because the icing is starting to harden a little bit so I'm just going to put a little bit of water onto my pastry brush and put a little bit onto the board and a little bit onto the igloo so it has something to stick to now and I'm just going to then press that by pressing it against the igloo see how you start to make the um, gap between the two of them disappear so I'm just pressing very gently with my thumb against the igloo so that it looks like it is part of the same structure. Go all the way around and do the same thing. So that's bit number one. Okay, then for bit number two, we want to make it look as though it's an opening. So I'm just gonna use my finger and just emboss it very slightly. 
So I'm just pressing it in just to give you the idea that there is an entrance there. You could use some black paste if you wanted to and actually fill it in. But it's usually just enough just to give it a bit of an idea just by pressing it. Okay, so there we go. And now what I need to do is go back to embossing again. So we need to put the lines on just like we did with the igloo itself. So it's going to be coming away from the body of the igloo towards the front. If you can, try and make your blocks all the same size. When you do it, don't do it as I'm doing it. Actually have it facing you towards you so that you can see what you're doing. But I want you to be able to see what I'm trying to achieve. Right, okay. So then they are blocks, so they're going to be going over the top as well. So make sure that you do do your little indent into the front there too. And again, when you're doing it, have it facing you so you can actually see what you're doing, just to be on the safe side. So I'll do that one facing me. Okay, right. So now we've got that starting to form. And then all I'm going to do next is just use this to make like a little shape which is the edge of all of the blocks. Okay, so that's got the main part of the glue done. We then just need to do the same thing where we're making it look like little blocks. And you can have one or two, depending on what you've chosen to do, how big your blocks would be. Okay, good. Now you can, if you're feeling brave, also come right to the very end. So you can muck it up if you don't have a steady hand. So it does tend to just finish it though and make it look a little bit better if you're feeling brave enough to be able to do it. And of course, if you do muck it up, just take it off, scrunch it back up and go again. You've got plenty of time to work with this paste, probably about maybe 20 minutes, something like that. And you can just keep taking it off and having a little play with it. Right, so I'll take that all the way around. There we go. So now we have one igloo with its little hole. Right, so now I want to put my ice hole here because they go fishing just outside the igloo. And for this, I'm using some of the pre-coloured blue that you can buy. It's to make it look watery, then it's actually quite a strong colour. I don't want it that strong. And as you can see, with this paste, now I'm using it, I'm covering it up all the time and putting it in the bag so that the air is not getting to it. Air is our enemy. It will dry your paste out. So make sure that you've covered it all the, all the time and then you'll have far more working time with it. Okay, so I am working the paste. I am bringing it together. It's now nice and soft, so just like when we needed it before. And I'm going to get some white out because I'd like to make it look a little bit more marbled and maybe not quite so dark. So for this, I have already worked the white icing and I'm going to do like sausages. And I'm just going to fold it up in my hand like that. And as you can see, what's starting to happen is the icing is starting to, to come together. And if I keep going with this, it's going to go a lighter colour in total. But what I kind of like is the idea that maybe it's water that's under there. So I'd like it to be a little bit rippled. So you can see how that's starting to come together now. So find it as much as you want it to be. It depends on how much you want there to be a turbulent looking ice hole or maybe one that's not so much. So I think that's quite nice. I'm going to go with that. And just a little bit of icing down there and I'm just going to use my hands just to thin it out roughly I'd like it to be the sort of height if not slightly lower than what I've got onto there so I've got quite a big bit of icing here but by flattening it I'm starting to see where I like the pattern and the bits that I actually want to use on the board itself so I can try offering that up have a look see what I think of it yep yeah, that's coming together quite nicely I need maybe a little bit more for this corner but I don't need as much as I've got going over there so I'm just going to rip a bit off, <clears throat> pull it out a little bit. And when you think that you're close to the size and the shape that you want it to be, then what we're going to want to do is put a little bit of water down on the board to make that stick. And then I'm just going to push it up against it. Okay. 
and I don't want it to be quite that much around this side. So if I leave it so that there's no white on the other side, it'll make it look like the sea. And we all know what climate change is doing to the ice caps, don't we, and how they're all being melted. So actually you're doing your bit to help our penguins by making your cakes at home so that big business aren't making uh, the cakes and you get all the travel miles and all the packaging and everything. So we're going to be looking after our little penguins. So that looks like it's the edge of the sea to me. So if you want to leave it there, then you can do. But what we can do, if you decide, no, I want it to be more of a nice pack as such. So just like a little hole that they've made so that they can do their fishing. So I'm just taking off with a damp cloth. I'm taking off all of that blue colouring, which is very aggressive. You can probably see that my fingers are now turning an attractive shade of grey. Don't worry, by the time you finish doing your penguins, yours will do. <clears throat> right. So if I want this to look like it's uh, more of an ice hole, then I'm just going to take some of the icing and fill it around the edge as well so that it's not finished with the blue, it's actually finished with the white. So that's just completely up to you. What I'm hoping is that you're going to make your cakes and then you're going to send us in photos so we can see what wonderful things you've done with yours. But I'll just put a little bit down here so that you have the choice. So it's your creativity now, what you want to do with it. Okay. Right, so that's a nice little hole that they have for doing their fishing in. And if we want this to look a little bit more realistic, you could spend a little bit of time by putting some ice banks in. So I'm looking to blend that where the two of them meet. And doing it on a bigger um, scale, like if you want there to be the wind has just blown and you've got uh, drift down by the side of the eclusé, and this is where you can cover up any of your mistakes that you might have. Then you just use the warmth of your hand to just tease that in together. If you're not very good with your hands and you can use things like ball tools, they're very good, where they can just get in maybe where your fingers cannot. So having a nice bank up against the side of the igloo like that just means that it's going up, it's going down. There we go. So the aim is that you don't see the join when you finish doing it. Okay. Right, so last stage of this then is if we want it to look a little bit more magical, say, then what we can do is, is make it a little bit more sparkly. Now, you can see the first thing that I'm doing now is actually putting this icing away. This is usable, so I can use this for the next two weeks if I want to. So I'm going to put that in there and I've got that to work with later. Okay, so if you fancy making it look a little bit more magical, sparkly, that sort of a thing, then I've got some granulated sugar in here. And granulated sugar will stick wherever there is damp, not wet, because it will dissolve it, damp. So you can just put a little bit of water onto a pastry brush and then just very lightly put a bit of water on there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's not very much water on there at all. And then you can just take your granulated sugar and you just, wherever it's wet, it will then stick. And the reason that you try and stick it is particularly if you're going to be moving this cake, then you want um, the icing should stay on it rather than it just all flying off when you actually move. Okay, so there we go. So where we've got things like our little snow drift, for an example, that would be quite nice because it'll just catch the light really nicely there. And if we think to ourselves, well actually this is an icy pool of water, so quite nice again just to have a few little sprinkles over the top of it so it looks like it's slightly icy. And there we are, we have our cake board finished and now we're ready to get on with all the little bits that we're going to put onto the top. As you can see, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces left in here 
Now, once it's been out in the air, like this has, so when you've worked it, you've probably only got a couple of weeks until it's just too dry to use anymore. So what I would do is put it into something like this, just cover it over and make sure that the minimum amount of air is getting in there and that will keep it for the next couple of weeks. Um, obviously, like I've got from the turns of the candy canes in here, if I put that red and that white together I've got some more pink that I can do for Santa's face I've got some more of the little funky things here you could even if you're not going to use it you could even scrunch it all together flavor it uh, with some peppermint and you make some nice peppermint creams so that's a nice use as well any icing that you've got left which is still in its original packaging so like I've got here that is going to be fine for as long as the sell by date is so I've got on here a date of June so that's going to keep me for the next six months. So again, all I'm looking to do is to keep the air out of that as much as possible and then pop it into a bag and it'll just be sitting there ready to use. Right, so now that we've got all of the basic decoration on the board, we now have the fun bit. And this is where we get to start playing. Um, I've got a range of coloured icings out in front of me here. This is all commercially available. All the supermarkets do it. Some of the local shops do it as well, so we can try and get it local. Um, so there are a full range of colours that you can get. You can also mix them together. So don't think the fact that oh I've had to buy red and I've had to buy yellow and now I've had to buy orange if you mix those two together you're going to get the orange so have a look at your colour wheel if you can and just work out which ones you actually need but for making our penguins obviously one of the most important things we're going to need is going to be black and we're also going to need white and because my hands are going to get really mucky I have got this still to the side so this is just a damp uh, dishcloth so that I can just keep wiping my hands all the time now we have some more modelling tools out here. If you have modelling tools, great. If you can use them, they can get in places that you cannot. Um, so I've got things like uh, dog bones and balling tools, which are just great because they're tiny. Um, I've also got things like sharp knives here, or if you've got scalpels, they can be quite handy as well. I've brought out a little mini rolling pin in case the urge takes me. I've got a butter knife, so a non-serrated knife here. I've also got some craft paint brushes, so you're just looking for something that can come to a point. And I've got a small set of scissors. And I've also got some alcohol. So this is optional, but when you are doing some of the work, if you want to make it look really, really sort of like bright and shiny, you can use these dust colorings, which come in silver and gold and white and all sorts of different things. And if you just dust with them, it gives a very similar effect to what you've got with the granulated sugar. But if you paint with them, then it leaves quite a brilliant effect behind afterwards. So we will be making some little bottles. So if I then paint them with these colours, it's going to look like glass. Um, to, to make that work, you need white alcohol, so gin, vodka, Bacardi, anything like that. A bit for you, a bit for the cake. Um, other colourings that you might possibly want to use, so if you have got colourings already and you don't want to buy the pre-coloured, the best ones to put in uh, royal, uh, royal icing are going to be droplet ones. The best ones to put into buttercream, frosting or sugar paste or flour paste is going to be these ones which come in a little tub. They're in a gel form and they're very concentrated so you don't need very much of them. So those are the main ones. I don't like water-based um, colourings very much because they tend to change the consistency of the icing. Right, so now we need to have a go at making a penguin. So for starting off, I'm going to be getting the black out. And I'm going to make this one slightly bigger than I would normally make them, just so that hopefully it'll show better. And again, like all of these icings, you get it out of the bag and you pummel it until it starts feeling as though it is uh, mouldable. And that's what you're looking for. If you do this too early, then they will just be cracking on you and not doing what you want them to. But that now feels good. So it's kind of like if you pull the paste very gently, you see how it kind of like teases apart rather than breaking. Right, so that is now ready. So I'm making a ball and then I'm going to model it into the shape of a penguin, which just means half of that ball I am pressing in, so I'm making almost like a little cone. It's got a rounded bottom, but then it's got these sides which are coming in, and then we've got a flat top. Okay, so that is the basic shape of a penguin, believe it or not. 
And I am now covered in black and just about put white on his front. So this is why you need this damp towel. I don't go and wash my hands all the time because you constantly be at the sink trying to get it off all the time. Whereas if you just have a damp cloth, then that's a lot easier. Okay. Right. So for doing the white part of it, I'm just going to take some of the white icing out. Same thing again, I'm just going to model it. And you can see every time I'm taking that icing out, I close the bag up again so that the air isn't getting in there. That will keep that working for longer. So there's no point wasting your icing. Not good for your pennies, not good for the planet. So, right now, I have just started to make this type of a shape. So I'm looking for something which almost mimics the inside edge of this little shape that I've got here. So I'm looking for something which has got a slightly rounded bottom, so I'm just using my fingers just to, to do that. I want it to be coming in, in shape here. So again, you can just use your fingers just to tease it. And then at the top, to make cute, there are lots of different ways you can make penguins, but these little cute ones are if you just get something like a small pair of scissors and just make a cut into the top of it. Okay, so by doing that, what I then want to do is I've got really hot fingers, so I'm just going to put a bit of icing sugar onto my hands. I'm just going to very gently round that off. So this is the shape that we're aiming for. This is what we have. So for doing that, the first thing you need to do is just round it off a bit there and then squash it, round it and squash it. Okay, so once I've got that and it looks fairly level on both sides, so you don't want one a lot larger than the other because that will make him look a little bit odd. So once I've got that, I am then ready to attach this onto the penguin. I have just some ordinary water in a little ramekin. Water and icing, terrible combination. One will hurt the other quite a lot. So you will melt your icing if you use too much. So I always use a tiny little brush, small amount on the brush itself, and then take it off on the side of the tub. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of water onto the front here, not too much, so it's only just barely visible. Do not have it so it's dripping because it's gonna make work for you. Right, and then I'm going to take my little fella and I'm gonna place it up against it. So that's stage number one. Our next part is then to press that against the background. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing it against the little cone that I've got and it's starting to thin it. So you can see how I'm chunky here but you can see how I'm thin here. That's the effect we're looking for. We want these to look like well-fed, happy penguins. So I'm just doing the same thing again. I am pressing it out at the sides, trying to maintain this curvy shape. That's the bit that we like, because that just makes them look cute. And I'm gonna do the same again on this side. Okay, and then I'll just press it down in the middle and just adapt my shape. So what I'm looking for is kind of curvy here and then coming out, rounded, round edge on the sides there. You can tuck as much as you like underneath. That's not the important bit, it's not gonna be seen. What you're looking for is this shape here and this thinness on the sides here. So that's good. So that's got my basics done and then you just need to make sure that it still stands up. Right, I've got cocktail sticks here. Um, but you could also use the end of one of your veining tools and I'm just going to make an eye So I'm going to put it in to the icing and I'm just going to rotate it around and because there's black icing behind it It just gives you the idea of there being a little eye there So I need to have this facing me to do the second one so that I don't make him look too weird Okay, so there we go. Now we've got our little eyes on our penguin Next place is going to be where we're going to put the beak. Now the beak is a little bit complicated, so we'll come back to that when we're feeling a bit braver. Right? And just for the minute, I'm going to use a balling tool, but you could use anything. Again, the end of a, a paintbrush would be fine. And I'm just going to put a little mark where I think his beak is going to sit so that the icing is soft and it's got the hole made ready for me. Okay, so the next thing on our little uh, penguin is the fact that he's going to need little flippers, little wings. He can't get through the water if he uh, doesn't have his little wings. When you make anything and it has two of something, you always make them at the same time. So this one piece of paste here, which is about the size of a garden pea, I am then going to split that into two and try and make two similar sized peas. That's my aim. 
Okay, so now I've got, I've probably got more of a garden pea, I'd have married that pea to start with. <clears throat> right, next job then is going to be to roll it on one end. So don't touch this end at all, but just roll on that end so that it starts to make it go finer and it makes a cone shape. So I'm going to do the same thing again on this one. I don't usually do this left handed, so that should be entertaining. Okay, so here we go. Same thing again. So what I should hopefully end up with is two fairly similar looking cones. And if they're not, you just work with it until you get two which look similar. Okay. Next job then is going to be just to flatten them a little bit. But you can do this work when you've actually got it on the penguin itself. And I now need a little bit of water. When I say little, I mean little. Otherwise you'll be cursing me. And I'm going to put a little bit of water on one side of his waist type area and the same again on the other side. And then you're going to take your wing and you're just going to press it on at the thick ball, which we did very little with at the top part of it. And then you're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to turn it towards me just so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So that's our little penguin done. And now we're feeling brave enough to maybe have a go at doing the beak. So I've just been touching black. I'm just about to touch orange. So I'm gonna clean my hands off. Right, okay. So for doing the beak, you can, um, you can do it several different ways, but I think probably the easiest way to start off with is just to get a small piece of paste. So, I'm really talking, we've upgraded now, we're on a petit pois pea, so we've moved to a smaller pea again. So you're going to make a ball and you're going to make a cone. So that's going to be his basic shape. And then I'm going to flatten it a little bit. And if you're feeling brave, you can take one more step, but you don't have to do that. You could leave it just at this step here and just attach this here. But if you're feeling like you want to be a bit more adventurous, take your, your scissors and just cut into it. So I'm cutting into that way round. Actually, I can see I've got a bit of black on there, so that's not going to be good. Right, so try again. So I'm just going to cut in. And by doing that, you can actually make a little beak. Okay, but it's fiddly and it makes it harder to handle. Right, so I'm going to need a little bit of glue, so a little bit of water just in that hole that I made in readiness for the beak. And then the fun part is trying to get that beak to go into that hole. And this is where you feel like you never have enough hands. So use whatever you have to be able to do the work for you. So I've, I've got it on there, so at least it's on, but I need to make sure it's stable. So I'm just gonna use the tool. So this is the end of the paintbrush. If you wanna have your beak open, if you wanna have your beak closed, now is the time that you get to play with it. And if you think it's a bit too long, you can just push it in back towards his head. If you squeezed it too hard, you can squeeze it and thin it out a bit. So you get a little bit of playing time to make the sort of beak that you're after. So I think that will do us. Okay, see that from the side as well. So that's got our basic little prototype for penguins made. And what we want is a range of penguins doing all sorts of activities on this igloo. So it's not just going to be one big, happy, chubby penguin like I've got here, but he's going to have the whole family with him as well. So for doing that, we're going to bring in other penguins. So here's some I made earlier. That's such a great thing to be able to say. I really feel like I'm a, a true professional now, I can say. Here's some I've made earlier. There we go. And it'll be really nice if we can have them all just as they are here. Or how about if we get a little bit more fun with them? So, for example, maybe your little penguin feels a little bit chilly. So maybe it wants a hat on it or a scarf, whatever. You can get as carried away as you like. So how do we make those? Well, first of all, you need to pick your colour that you want to do. So how about, I've got a nice yellow one on that one there. So how about this time we make it a blue little hat. So again, out of the bag and bring the paste together and I'm going to make it into a little ball 
and I'm just going to squash the ball and then we'll just pop that little bit of water on the head so that it sticks. Okay. So that's got the main part of the hat on. If we want to make it look as though it's got um, some sort of ribbing on it, we just go around the outside edge. And it just makes it look as though it's maybe a knitted hat. Okay. And I'm gonna finish the little seam off at the top. So I'm just very gently embossing a little series of dots into the very top of there. Okay, right, so every hat needs a bobble as far as I'm concerned. It's like the law. If you're going to have a woolly hat, you want a bobble on the top of your hat. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water onto there, put my little bobble onto the top, and then to make it look like a fluffy bobble, then I'm just going to use the tip of the cocktail stick this time, or you could use your veining tool, it also has a very good point on the end of it, and do the same thing. Okay, so that is making us a nice little cute bobble hat, and if you want to fiddle with it, bear in mind that you will start um, losing some of your little embossing if you do it. So the great thing is, as long as you're doing it, if you don't think to yourself, oh, I wish I'd have done that with it, that's fine. Fiddle with it, get it how you want it to be, and then if you've lost some of your lines, you can just go back over them again, and they'll come up as good as gold. Okay, right, so this one has now got a little hat on. That's good. I feel it's a little bit warmer. Uh, this one also had a little set of um, a scarf around it, so how about if this one has a scarf as well? So for doing this, you're going to start off with that icing and you're just going to roll it into a length and then check to see if it's long enough, how long do you want it to be? So for this one, I crossed it over and made it quite a long one, but this one's a bit more of a cool dude, I feel. He only wants a shorter one. So I'm going to have it just a little bit longer than that. I'm going to use my finger just to squash it down a little bit. My finger is warm, so a little bit of icing sugar just on the tip of it. Okay, good. Now I'm starting to lose my shape a little bit, so I'm just going to use the knife to straighten that back out again so that it looks a little bit squarer. Okay, right. Now you could use your rolling pin if you wanted to and go over it, just be careful you don't go too thin because this is not as uh, an icing which has got hardness and stabilizers in it. Right, okay, so I then want it to be something which has got little tassels on the end, so I'm just embossing a little line at the end and then just doing little indents into the end of it to make it look as though it's got fringing. And then I'm just going to pop this onto the penguin. For this other one, I did more lines like we embossed on the hat. I did more lines on it. But for this one, she just wants it plain. Okay, and then we can just place it on, have a little look. So I'm going to turn him towards me, see what I think. Oh yes, I can feel he's warmer already. There we go, so now he's feeling better. And I'm going to make this one a little fisherman. So. Anything that I put here, so I could use the cocktail stick for an example and use that as a fishing rod and that would work quite well. But there's always a concern that if you're not always vigilant, then something could end up in maybe a youngster's mouth that you weren't expecting. So I would always prefer to use dried spaghetti and because that is edible. So even if a little one bites into that, it'd be a little bit crunchy, but it's not actually going to hurt them or damage them in any way. So a little bit of spaghetti and then we've got a reel of cotton this is just ordinary cotton and any dark color of cotton and all you need to do is attach that to that so here's what i've done earlier on that because that's just a fiddly little job it's not technically difficult it's just fiddly because it's so small so i've attached a little bit of line to it one end i don't really need to be very long but the other end i'd like it to be going into the ice pool and then rubbish scissors that's for sure 
Right, so I'm going to sit this little fella up here, sitting by and doing some fishing. So I'm going to put a little bit of water just on where I'm going to sit him. And I'm going to place him on and make sure he's on the ground, that he's not actually in the water itself. There we go. And then I've got his little fishing rod here. So if I then just work out how long I want the fishing rod to be, and because this icing is still soft, I can just stick it into the icing and it'll stick. And then I can work out, okay, maybe I'll have my line going on to about that sort of distance. And that can then just go into the water, like so. So we've got our first little fisherman. Okay, what about if we only made like the top half of the head? Maybe there's one that's actually in there already. So here I've got one where I've only just made the head part of it and I haven't bothered with the rest of the body. And for that, I'm just going to sit him because he's actually underneath the ground anyway. So he's in the water and he's either just about to go fishing or he's just been fishing, whatever. But anyway, he looks a bit of a cool dude. Okay, so now we've got a couple of penguins on there. So there's all sorts of things. Your imagination can take you wherever you want to go with this and you can just have fun with it. So I've got a big penguin here, but how about if the big penguin has a little baby? So there we go, so we can make different sizes. The smaller you go with your penguins, the more fiddly it becomes to actually do anything on them. And so therefore, what I would say is make your big ones first, get into the swing of it. And then if you're enjoying doing that, then try making everything smaller. So you just start with smaller pea sizes and then just model it exactly the same way. So this little one here has got on, well, either little ear muffs or maybe it's headphones. So maybe they've got their Bluetooth somewhere hidden in their pocket. So what we can do with that is all that is is just a pea which is squashed, and a little sausage, which goes in between the two of it. So I'll just demonstrate that on the board for you. So that's one little muff, and that's another little muff, and the bit that joins them together is just a very thin sausage of paste that you would put over the head of the little penguin. Okay, so very, very simple and straightforward to do. OK, and I've just put a little bit of water underneath on there. So I think what we need to do is probably place them on the cake and just get a feel for how our scene is coming along. So I reckon they're just in front of the, the igloo myself. And in my head, this is like a little mummy. And this is one of her little babies. There we go. So they're sitting there now, nice and happy. What else can we do? Okay, so maybe what we can do is scatter some more around and busy doing little things on the um, ice sheet itself. Um, so I'd like to maybe make some skis. So how about if one of them wants to ski off the top of the igloo, because that just sounds like a brilliant thing to do to me. So if we take one of these that we've already got, we just want something to make the skis out of. So I'm just going to take a little bit of pace and again because there's going to be two skis I'd like them to be sort of similar sized <clears throat> there we go so I've got two little balls there and I'm just going to and this is optical illusion as well you don't need to have the ski going right the way underneath you just need to see part of it so I'm going to roll one sausage there I've got another sausage here and I'm going to just squash them down a little bit. I don't want to squash them too thin because I do want to be able to work with them. So I'm going to place this little fella, I think, up on the top of the igloo. So he's a little bit of a devil and he's decided he's going to ski off the top of the igloo. So I'll just put a little bit of water on the top of the igloo and place, oops, there we go, balls number one. There's number two. As you can see, they're fiddly little things to do. Right, so if you have something fall on the on the board or whatever, then all you need to do is just bring it back into line again. If it falls on the floor, I would leave it on the floor, so don't, don't bother eating it then. 
and all you need to do is just curl it up a little bit. Just so you can see that from the side, just curl it up a little bit. And then a little bit of water on the top of the skis. And then you can take your little penguin. And there we go. A skiing penguin. And if you want to, you could even take a bit of your um, um, spaghetti and actually just have it as little poles. But I think this one, this one's a bit of a daredevil. He doesn't need to have poles. He's just going for it himself. Okay. So he's a little bit of a daredevil, but how about if we have another one? How about putting some Christmas lights up? Everybody loves Christmas lights at Christmas, don't they? So how about we have one little penguin who's feeling very, very Christmassy, and what he wants to do is put Christmas lights up over the igloo itself. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, but every year you get the Christmas lights out and everything is all tangled up and then they won't work and everything else. So he's no exception. I think that what he's doing is he's trying his very best, but what he's got is a big mess to have to deal with. Now, this is just going to be one long sausage. You could pipe this, but I find that people are very nervous of piping. So if we do this instead with sugar paste, if we don't like it, then we can take it off and we can just go again. But what I will say is because you're going to put a little bit of water onto the icing itself to stick this to it, wherever you're going to put it you need to decide that's going to be its final place so you might need to jiggle it around a little bit you could take it off and replace it if necessary but this black is so intensive it is going to end up sort of making a mark on the cake itself right okay so there we go we've got this is our string and as brave as you feel is as thin as you go because it gets harder to work the thinner that it is but the thinner it is the more effective it's going to look. So let's take these. Right, so I reckon my little fella that's working on this, let's make it this little one here. And he's sitting on top of the igloo here, on the roof, being very industrious, unlike his friend here, who just wants to ski. So he's sitting there, ready to go, and what he's got is a big pile of lights so maybe he's just started putting the lights up so i'm going to put a little bit of water onto the igloo again just be careful you don't put too much water onto the igloo because it will stay dried and shiny it will dry it'll dry shiny so i'm going to have the next little scallop that it's going up to so i'm only really attaching it at the top of the scallops you can go around the whole of the igloo doing this if you like but I think it's going to look more funny if this poor little fella's got himself all mixed up and he's got lights everywhere. So I am going to just have it all as a mess, like my lights are at Christmas time. Okay, right, now I'm going to leave that to set on there for a little bit before I come back to it and put the lights on it. And the lights you could model bulbs or we could just put on like little juggies that you could buy, little uh, coloured balls that you can buy from the supermarkets. Okay, so we will come back to that. Right, so moving around to the back of the, uh, the board around here, we could have a little bit more going on around here. And do you always have one of those uh, people at Christmas time that maybe drinks a little bit too much and ends up sort of like in a stupor in a corner somewhere? I don't see there's any reason why we can't have a penguin that looks like that. So I have modelled one already, face down, where he's had one too many and ooh, I'm sure it's not you, but maybe you know somebody that could be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have my little drunken penguin. So just modelled exactly the same way, but only half relief. So you can see how he's not quite as fat as normal. Because I'm going to see his underside as such, I've just made him little feet. And how have I done the feet? Well, all it is is a little pea, which I have then squashed. And if you're feeling very brave, just take your little scissors and you can actually just cut into it to make a foot. OK, so that's what I've done on there. So he's sitting there or he's more lying there. Sparko, one too many. How about if we make him a little bottle that he's been drinking out of? He's had maybe a little bit too much scotch or a little bit too much champagne. 
Now I'm going to make this out of white and this is where I'm going to use that icing and you can see the colour of my hands now. This is definitely penguin coloured fingers now. Glorious grey. Right. <clears throat> what do you think? Is this a top quality um, abode that they have? So is it any glue or does it not have facilities? In which case it's just called an egg. Yes, I like jokes. Bad ones at that. Right, so to make a bottle, we are going to take a little piece of paste and we're just going to roughly model it into the shape that a bottle would be. And because I'm going to use that colouring, that dust colouring to paint this, I can have it as a white base and it does quite nicely. Sometimes if maybe you're doing the silver one, you could colour it grey, or if you're doing the gold one, you could colour it a little bit of uh, yellow. Right, and if it gets stuck, all you need to do is release it. So I've got the top of the bottle there. I've got a thin neck coming down. Again, it's only in half relief, just because it's also fallen over next door to him in the snow. So a little bit, maybe I'll put a bit of water on here. So I can decide where I want to put it. There we go. So considering the size of the penguin, that's an enormous bottle of something that he's just been supping. Okay, right. So if we go for like a little glass effect, I'm using just a little bit of this dust colouring. This is completely edible, so you don't need to worry about that. And then I'm going to take my little bit of white alcohol and it's a tiny amount, so I'm going to put it into the, the container next door to it and then I can just dip into it. So I put my brush into the alcohol and then I dip it into the dust colouring. And then I can start painting it onto the top. Now you don't need to worry about making the kiddies all drunk from eating this because the alcohol actually evaporates off. It's just the vehicle for getting the dust colouring onto the bottle. Okay. And to make it look like a little bottle, maybe we'll put a tiny little label on it. So I've just taken a tiny little pea, which I am then just going to squash down and make into a little oblong shape. You could cut it, so you could use your knife to, to cut it. And then we'll let that dry for a little bit. We can actually even paint some wording onto the top of it. Okay, right, so, I'm just going to add a few more little um, penguins into the scene. Uh, I reckon this little penguin, this little baby penguin, is thinking, what on earth is going on there? Is it that embarrassing member of the family again? Let's put another little one next door to mum. And you can go as mad as you like. You can just have a couple of penguins on there. But I kind of love making them. When I start playing with these, I just I can spend hours just making all of these, these little fellas. So I've got a very tiny little one there. And I'm going to put a little one around the back here too. Okay, right, so we're starting to fill up nicely. <clears throat> right, my next little thing that I'd like to make then is some little um, parcels to be putting around and dotting around. And there's lots of different ways you can make parcels and you will get carried away in doing this as well. So I'm just gonna start off with a very, very simple one. So you could just take any colored bit of paste that you like. So I'm just going for a little bit of the yellow here and make it into a ball and then make it into like a little canister shape. So you've got your basic fundamental little shape there. And to make it look like it's a parcel, it's kind of nice to maybe put a bow on it or to um, put ribbons on it. 
So a very quick and easy way of making um, a little ribbon just for the top is just a little bit of water and stick a ball on the top. And again, if we just take our cocktail stick or our modelling tool and just dot it, so very much like we did the, the pom-pom, and it just kind of gives you the idea that it's a package of some sort. So that's very, very simple. If you want to take it on to the next stage, you could roll out icing and do very thin strips of icing and add that to it. So um, I, there you go, you've got one here where that's what's happened there. So actually that's a little twist that I've done onto there. But if you want to be really clever, you just emboss at the end like little crosses into the end of it so that it looks as though it's the paper that's been wrapped and you, this has got little dots on it as well just to give a little bit of an effect. Um, if you want to be really sort of clever and go a little bit more ornate in a bow, this is rolling out a very thin strip of paste and then just cutting off tiny little diamonds and attaching them and you can get sort of quite carried away with all the different shapes and everything. So I've got one here, like a little oblong one, which has got a bow. And on that one, I've got a couple of little tails on it as well. I don't think any baby penguin wouldn't be delighted if he didn't get a rubber ring for Christmas. So here we've got a wrapped up rubber ring. And for that little bow, that's just a little sausage. And as you can see, it's just made up of one little bit curled around, another little bit curled around, and then adding in a little tail at the base of it. Okay, so I've got a selection of different parcels here, adding different stripes to the top of it. Sometimes they're exciting shapes. So one little fella's obviously been bought a ship for Christmas. So you can have good fun in thinking about what would they get for Christmas? Um, how about a fish? What penguin wouldn't be delighted to not get a fish for Christmas. So I've got a selection of little presents here that I want to dot around. I've got a little candy cane here. So that I go in more detail on the, uh, the fairy cakes one, but it's just two sausages that are put together. So I've got a nice little selection of presents here. That one looks like a little hot water bottle. Okay, so I've got all my little presents sitting here. This one looks like a little can. So a little set of cans, so you can kind of imagine which of our penguins is going to be having that one for Christmas, can't you? And uh, this one here looks like they're getting a carrot for Christmas. So just a variety of shapes, a variety of colours. It just makes it look far more Christmassy. So it would be quite nice if we had maybe a stocking for them to be put up in. So I'm going to just make a very quick stocking to go on the side of the igloo. So I'm just taking... This is about the size of oh, a Malteser, something like that. And I'm just going to roll it into a cone. I want this to be in half relief. So I'm just going to squash it down a little bit and to make it into a stocking, all you really need to do is to bend the end of it. And where would they put it? Well, they'd probably put it up outside on the igloo in readiness for Father Christmas coming, don't you think? That's where I would put mine. So there we go, one of the little penguins very optimistically decided I'm going to hang a stocking up, see if Father Christmas comes. Okay, so that's got the actual sort of basic shape on there now. And to make it look more effective, I think it always looks quite nice if we have like a white top to it. So let's do that now. And that's just going to be a little sausage of paste. With it being attached on there, it's far easier to just attach these bits to it. You could do it all off of the cake and let them harden and then attach them. But it's just kind of easy to just put it straight onto the, the cake because it's attached to there. Okay, and if you want it to look like it's all feathery and fluffy, then just like we've done with our hats. Okay, so you can have a little row of those sitting out there. But I kind of feel that we need a Christmas tree, don't we? So we need something that all the presents are sitting around. And obviously, down in the South Pole, they have, you know, not that many trees around, but they probably have a special one for Christmas, I would have thought. 
So I've got some of the green icing here. There we go. I'll get that moving first of all. Now I do tend to find with this that it's quite good if you can make the shape first of all and then just leave it a little bit. So just like we've done with our um, bulbs that are going up there, just give it a little bit of time to set before you come back to it. So here's our tree and I'm just making a cone shape. So I've just modelled that into a cone and I'm just going to let that sit there for a few minutes before I come back to it. OK, so I'm going to put the tree up the back here and I'm going to scatter some of the presents around it. But I've probably got more presents and we'll just go around the trees. So I think I'm just going to dot some of those around onto the board as well. And isn't it lovely to think that through you being carbon conscious and actually making your own cake, so cutting down on travel time, cutting down on packaging, getting local eggs. I mean, all my eggs, I don't know about you, but I go to a local lady where the hens are running around in her garden and I buy my eggs from there. And that is just lovely. They taste better anyway, but there's no mileage to them. And you can buy local flour, use our local shops as well to buy all your bits and pieces. Okay, so there's a little selection of presents going on there. I'm going to put some more over here. Strikes me this is probably the place where the fish would be. He's probably just caught it and he's wrapped it while he's waiting for the next one. And maybe we'll put some more presents sitting around here, all stacked up, ready, waiting to be opened on Christmas morning. As I say, you can just go as mad as you fancy and just get as carried away as you feel like doing. I could sit for hours and make these. It's just so relaxing. And the great thing is people love it if they have a cake made for them. So even when you're looking at buying Christmas gifts for people, I think it's kind of nice if, you, if they get a homemade gift. So giving somebody something like this as a gift is just lovely. It's so much more appreciated so personal and it's so special. Okay, right, so we're starting to get nice and full now, aren't we? So I'm now gonna have a go at doing my Christmas tree. So for this, all I need is scissors and a the cone, which has hardened a little bit. And this is all to do with angles. So when you come to cut this, don't have your scissors up here. You want them quite close to the bottom and actually take quite a bit of paste and just cut it through. So I've just cut through and I'm going to move around and I'm going to do the same thing again and I'm going to do the same thing again and again and I'm just going to start working down putting layers into this so you can see how the basic shape is starting to appear the very top of it we will just sort out right at the very end but you just work your way down now, if you find this difficult, if this is difficult to hold, what you can do is get something like a, a paintbrush and just pop it on the end of there. So you don't have to, you just use a supporting finger. And I'm just going to keep working down. And you can make your tree as big or as small as you like. The bigger the tree, the bigger the branches are. So the less tight you'll have to do it. If you get a bit overzealous like I just did there, and you actually cut your little triangle off. So try not to do that too much. You can get away with it a little bit. The other thing that will happen is that your scissors will start to get quite mucky and that will then start sticking into the paste itself. So you're gonna work down, work down, keep working down layer by layer. Keep them small because they look cuter if they're small. If you're an impatient person, make them big because then it doesn't take very many of them but it just looks that much better if you can make them smaller little cuts like this and of course don't forget to breathe if you're doing it because that's the thing that you tend to hold your breath because you're doing something that is uh, 
French on. So as you can see, our little fella is just starting to come together and you just continue working down all the way around it until you end up with that. I think I've got one finished just to make life easier. So there you go, there's the little finished product. So once I've actually finished doing this, you then just have to carefully remove it off of the, the stick if you've chosen to do it that way. And then just give that a little bit of time to dry out before you then move it around. If you want to, you can actually get hold of them and just start pulling all these little bits out. I didn't bother on that one so that you can see the difference. So it's just a, a personal choice thing. Some people like them curled out, some people are not really too bothered. Um, if you want to make it look quite effective, how about putting a little bit of snow onto the top of it? And all we need then is just a little bit of water to stick it where we want it to go. We stick it about there and pick it up and pop it on. Okay, and then we just want some little presents to go around the base of it. Don't even worry too much if an occasional branch falls off because you just don't see it in the overall picture, luckily. I think we've got these hiding out of sight of our little drunken penguin. So I would then start looking at it and is there anywhere that you feel like you want to put a little bit more stuff? Is there anywhere that you feel is looking not as busy as elsewhere? So you can go as much to town as you want to or put on as many things as you actually want to. I look at that and I think that's actually getting pretty busy now, isn't it? So we're probably quite good. So I'll maybe, as soon as I've made them, I'll pop them on. So there's my rubber ring. Um, this time I'm going to stick. A little bow onto it. There we go. I think, I think the little boat is cute. I'm just going to put that there on its own. There we go. So the only bits we need to go back to now are the bits that we just need to finish off. So I'm going to do a little bit of mock wording on here and I'm going to attach the little bulbs onto there. So for making the little bulbs, you could make them yourself just out of small pieces of icing if you really want to you can actually model them more into sort of like heart-shaped bits so they start looking like a, a proper little bulb itself uh, it's just a little bit more time consuming and fiddly so i will leave you to just do whatever you fancy whatever your heart desires so i'm just going to make a little selection of them here Three of each colour would be nice. There we are, put that in there. And I hope this is making you fancy having a go at doing your own thing because I think your cakes will look amazing. Basically, you can do anything with this, and if you've got one penguin on it and an igloo, it'll look great. And everybody will be amazed because they can't do it, but you've done it. <clears throat> Let's take some red. <clears throat> and do you know the little tip about if you're cooking a cake to turn the oven off five minutes before you've finished doing your baking? Because you have so much residual heat that's left in a in an oven, it's kind of wasted. So save yourself a little bit of energy. You need to go around slower. And actually uh, just turn it off five minutes earlier and it'll be absolutely fine. Right, okay, so all I'm going to do now is just put a little bit of water onto that black bit. And then I'm going to take, make sure I'm not put that because the sink covers his foot. There we go, a little fella there. And I'll come down to here, put a little yellow one on it. And come down to here. Now, 
Now, because I haven't attached this everywhere, you can probably see how it's moving a little bit. So if you need to stabilise it anymore, then just put a little bit of water underneath it. Pop it on. But the concern, which is what it's doing with me right now, is the fact that it sticks to you rather than sticking to the cake, which is where we want it to go. So I'm going to bring that back up a little bit. So don't be too frightened by this. If things start to move around, that's perfectly fine. And to be honest, it goes to show that I'm human, really, for the fact it's done it to me as well. So as long as... You couldn't do this if you'd put this on yesterday, but because we're talking not very long ago, it's absolutely fine. Right, OK, so I'm going to just go back to adding on more of my little balls. And I quite like it. I've done it before where I actually sculpt them all the way around the igloo, which is really rather cute. <clears throat> Depends on how much time and effort you want to put into it. But if I'm sitting and doing one of these in an evening, I am so relaxed by the time I go to bed. It's just lovely to do. It kind of takes away all of your worries of the day. And I love that. Oops. Forward. Oops. Throwing it around. Here. I reckon I probably need to make that's another couple of balls would be nice on there. If you are very big fingered, so I have quite big fingers, sometimes it's easier to use something like a cocktail stick, pop it onto the cocktail stick instead, and then put it where you want to place it. Personally, I just like getting myself in there and just sorting it out that way. And hopefully it'll all come together. So put one more into there. And to be honest, this little penguin looks a bit like me when doing the uh, Christmas decorations. I'm always a little bit frustrated. I start off with good intentions. Then I get a bit one of my lights won't work. It looks to me like his lights are working, so I think he's probably happy. Oops. Okay. Right. So the last thing we now really need to do is just a little bit of an idea to make this look like it's a uh, a label that we have on there. Now you can um, uh, use pens which have got edible food colouring in which is quite nice um, or what you need is a very fine paintbrush. This is probably not quite fine enough but it'll give us the idea. So I'm just trying to put a bit of an idea. If you're not sure what well, this is going to come out like practice on something so just go into your palette and just see what sort of size of line that you're doing and how it's how it's going, how it's painting. This is a glycerin based colour, not a water based colour, so therefore it's less likely to bleed on your icing. So I'm not actually going to write an actual word, I'm just going to make it look like there's writing on here. What it probably says is champagne and brute, something like that. Okay. Right, well, that has got our little cake done. So lots of little ideas for you and lots of playing that you can do. And please do send in your photos and show us what you've done because I think your ideas are going to be far better than mine, so I can't wait to see them. Thanks.